All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday Lunch and Learn. My name is Stacy Carr, and I am here with my wonderful friend and colleague, Teresa Kogar. Um, and today we have the pleasure of talking to you about one of our favorite topics, um, talking about special interests. Oops. And, oh my goodness, computer programming is not one of mine. Um, <laughs> fostering interests to increase motivation, friendships, and employment opportunities. Um, a bit of housekeeping before we get started, as usual. We are going to be recording this for quality control, and then we're going to post it to our website. Um, we'll also be posting our PowerPoint at the end of this Lunch and Learn. Um, but by, by participating, you are consenting to be recorded. Um, but please know that as you um, chat anything in the chat box, your name will be removed and it'll be an, an anonymous transcript. So um, let's get going. All right, special interests. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, I've worked with individuals with autism for over 25-ish years, mm -hmm. and I absolutely love some of the interests that folks have. And I wanna share a few, and then Teresa will as well. Currently, um, one of my uh, friends is an adult with autism, and he does this really neat, um, YouTube thing where he video games to um, Mario and people subscribe to watch him play and learn how to master the game. Um, I think that's a really popular thing with folks with autism and uh, folks without. I know my son who's 14 watches people play video games, which I don't understand, but whatever. <laughs> um, Another one of my friends loves trees and he's been so inspired by trees that he's joined cross country because he likes to be with the trees. He goes on little trips with his family and measures trees and identifies them and really um, has become to love trees and learning about the different types and where they are located. Um, I have a friend who now lives in the New York area who when he lived here, he could tell me all about the metro stations across the country and actually across Europe as well. Um, and I would tell him I'm going to Boston and he'd say, well, where are you staying and where do you need to go? And he'd tell me exactly how to get there. It was never yeah. wrong. I wish he lived with me in New York when I was there, but that's okay. Um, I have a friend who lives in the neighborhood who loves and loves and loves and loves to run. He listens to music and he goes out running for quite some time. Um, the other thing that is a passion of his is dogs. So the only thing that will really stop him from running, um, even if he's tired, is a dog. So when I see him on the path or whatever and he sees my dog, he'll stop to talk. Um, and then one more that's really interesting is um, this young man who has pretty high support needs um, has a job for recycling in a sort of rural area of Virginia. And what's great about this is this is an area that doesn't have general recycling. Um, so what they have set up is with their neighbors and the community around him, um, they, the neighbors contact him, he goes with his attendant or his um, father and picks up recycling, they pay him and then he goes and takes it to the recycling area. What's great about this is it's on his schedule really and he, if he's having a really challenging day or if he um, is not feeling well, he can do it at any point during the week. And so they've worked out this really nice um, relationship and it's um, making money and it's his job, which is pretty awesome. Teresa, what about you? I know, I, um, I have friends uh, too that have some really awesome special interests and I, I really like hearing those stories. And I, I mean, um, from people, um, with uh, Autumn, and we're going to talk more about that. But I had uh, I worked with a young man who, um, in elementary school, who uh, had an intense interest in fans. He could tell you every type of fan, whether it was an overhead fan or a, a fan, a box fan. I've learned the different types of fans, of the different makes and models of fans, how to take fans apart, put them back together. Um, you know, it was really awesome because I always said that that young man would be best a uh, fan 
and uh, salesman at Lowe's. And so he's probably in his uh, late twenties now. So I, I'm curious to know what he's doing, but um, that was a really uh, interesting one um, and really important, right? Because actually someone in, uh, there was a first grade teacher whose room he loved to um, go into because she had a fan um, and uh, he was able to show that teacher how to open up her fan and clean the blades because <laughs> she couldn't figure out how to get it open. So that was pretty cool. Um, I have another friend who knows everything about bats and I learned a fascinating story about in World War II how they used bats um, to carry messages. So so, you know, just some really um, neat facts that, you know, that we may not um, have known on our own. Um, dinosaurs, I know, is one that is um, for a lot of folks. But again, I worked with a young man who we were looking to um, use his special interest in um, helping him uh, academically. And so we had a first then board and um, he was in elementary school and, and one of the folks I was working with said, let's um, show him some pictures. And uh, I think the, the person thought, well, cause he's in elementary school, he's gonna you know, pick one of the cutesy dinosaurs. Well, he knows a lot about dinosaurs. He studies them, they're his interests. And so he actually picked this dinosaur that was on the <laughs> screen to put on his um, first then board, which I I thought was totally cool. Of course, he knew the names um, and everything about them. And of course, trains is another one that I worked with, really was into trains and buses. And again, kind of like your map thing, Stacey, you could tell me the train schedule, um, when it, the trains were coming in, uh, when was the best time to get on the train, um, and knew the different types of trains uh, and the buses. And one of the things that um, I did with him was make a, uh, a special book about buses that that he could look through those um, during downtime and things in, in class. But just the fascinating, what's so great about special interests is the intensity of knowing the specifics about those interests and the knowledge that they actually, um, folks who know about those bring to us. And I think that's really essential for us to remember. I agree. And you know, I, I often talk about special interests as intense hobbies. So I think about the things that I really enjoy um, you know, I, I really like animals. I like being outside. I like flowers. And those are my hobbies. And sometimes I spend a lot of time thinking about them. I spend a lot of money on them. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard for me to not engage in my hobbies. Well, that's kind of what a special interest is. But the difference mm -hmm. is special interests are special interests are far more intense and mm -hmm. much more um, intrusive. So instead of like right now, I'm on this lunch and learn with my buddy, Teresa, and I could be thinking about this and I can set my, my thoughts about animals and um, coffee aside while I do this. And that's putting something on hold so that you can really engage in the moment that you're in. And that's where special interests and hobbies kind of um, are different. Do you agree, yeah. Teresa? I, I agree, and I think that's a great point because we're, we're going to continue to talk about that. And, and I think that's where uh, we have a real opportunity to, um, to teach our individuals with autism um, how to maintain those special interests um, in the topics we're going to talk about, but also how to learn to put those on hold so that they are successful. Um, because sometimes that's it, right what can keep them um, from being successful. And so we want to be able to, um, to teach them that. So I, I would totally agree with you that that's a great point. So Trace, why don't you talk about special interests and motivation? I know this is one of your areas I'm of. Sorry, I don't. Sure, I'm sorry, I don't see that slide. That's why I didn't say anything. Oh, really? <laughs> I can't... Okay, there we go. I see the slide now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I see it now. Sorry. <laughs> I saw the delay there. Uh, no, no problem. Yeah, I really, so, you know, when we talk about folks, um, motivation is, is a really broad topic, right? And we all um, have times where we may have more or less motivation depending on the circumstance, right? And so I really want to just briefly touch on this because, um, you know, motivation can be difficult and can be really difficult for our students with ASD um, for many different reasons, right? Executive functioning, the social communication um, aspects that we, we know are characteristics of who they are. But, you know, when you really think about it too, uh, motivation is influenced by things like our learning history, 
um, our learning styles. Um, I'm a very visual learner. If I have to sit and listen to someone like you're doing now <laughs> for long periods of time, uh, my motivation lessens. I kind of tune out. Um, um, so it's really important to know those learning styles. And, and again, um, you might have to be in a class where you have a lot of audio going on, but again, how do we accommodate? I know for myself, I make sure I have um, those notes or lecture uh, notes next to me so that I not only my hearing, but I can see what's going on. And that helps, um, that helps me more motivated to learn that content. Um, the success and failure with that content, you know, um, we know the facts about, um, you know, people with disabilities, Abilities or differing abilities, as Stacey and I like to say, in general, and um, we want to we want to promote more success and failure. And I think oftentimes with our students with ASD, um, the anxiety piece that's a part of um, often a part of the um, co-occurring conditions, um, they can um, oftentimes feel um, less success and more failure um, just for the fact that they're. Um, more in tune on what they need to do in order to be successful. They really want to make sure that they are successful. So um, sometimes the motivation is, gosh, I might not do this right or perfectly in the right way, so I'm going to fail at it. And the more failures they have, right, the less motivation. And I would say that was, is with anyone. Um, incentives to engage in tasks, and that's internal and external. And again, that's a big um, topic in motivation. But a lot of times, right, when we're giving I mean, um, tangible reinforcers and things for kids who are engaging tasks and doing a good thing. That's on that internal motivation on um, if how to continue um, to engage in those tasks. So if you're having me do um, a less preferred task for me would be some kind of math uh, problem solving. <laughs> um, but then afterwards, maybe I have some time on the computer. Um, the more success I have in that with that external right, reinforcement, um, I'm going to build that internal, like, yep, yep, I want to do this even if I don't get the computer. And that's really important. And that takes time. That takes a lot of time. And again, that goes back to building that success in for that student. Um, and then again, the learner's perspective. I think this is one of the things I love most about um, individuals with autism who can just say to you, you know, that really didn't mean anything. <laughs> there was really no value or what is the purpose of this activity? Uh, sometimes I hear that. And you know what? It's just like with any student, they're right, right? Like, what is the purpose of this? And what is it, what's the value for me in doing this? And, um, and we teach that to them. It's really important to take that in perspective because just for myself, if I don't see the value in something, I'm less motivated to engage in what you're asking me to do. Um, so we have to teach around those things. Stacey, you have anything else on that? I'll unmute myself now. I'm sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Um, no, that's absolutely that's absolutely true. And I think about, um, you know, if who here you don't have to answer, but likes to play games on their phone. Hmm. I do, and I think okay, so I'm going to do these few tasks, and if I do them, then I can spend a little bit of time on my phone and play a game of backgammon, or or something else. Um, and that's that, you know, um, motivation. I, I really do want to get to playing, you know, solitaire or backgammon. So I'm going to do these things. And even if there are things I don't like to do, like fold laundry, then <laughs> I will be able to do this. And that's really using that motivation that Teresa talked about to um, benefit. And, and I learned that as a growing up, um, as a teen and an adult, but this is something that we might have to teach our um, folks with different abilities. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. So you're probably on to the next slide, but there's a delay for some reason. Oh, here we go. Okay. Everything seems delayed. <laughs> Setting it up for success. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I'm delayed. Also today. <laughs> um, thanks, everyone. So, you know, Stacy, you alluded to this point. It's really about setting students up for success. And again, um, you know, it's easy for us to take time, but both of us are practitioners. We still work with individuals with different abilities, especially autism. And we know that, um, especially if I go back to that past learning history I just talked to you about in the slide before, if you have a past learning history of more for failure than success, it's going to take longer. But I really, really am a proponent and urge folks 
so that no matter what age of individual you're working with, don't give up and keep putting those successes in place so that um, so that they have that motivation to want to to have a quality of life that's really important to them. Um, you know, Stacy talked a little bit about this, and and I'll I'll let her speak more to this point. But you know, it's really important um, for our students to have the opportunity to talk about their special interests. Oftentimes in school. Um, we'll hear, oh, well, you, we can talk about that later, or it's a reward. And so, you know, what I really want to urge people is, that's like if you said to me, um, Teresa, I don't want to hear about, one of my special interests is, is music. I actually have a music education degree. I play music on the side, and it's a very important part of my life. And if you told me that I couldn't engage in that opportunity, I might have to wait, um, my motivation maybe a little less at that point. And so it's structuring the day and structuring opportunities that I can talk to you about playing my saxophone and, and why I like that and why it's important to me and talking to you um, about Adolf Sachs, who invented the saxophone. I might want to talk to you about those things. So um, again, honoring the person, I think, you know, what we have to remember too is, is uh, and there's some slides on this, is people who talk about their special interests, um, it gives them an importance of self-image. Uh, and those individuals with autism who can tell us why their special interests are so important say that. They say, um, this really means something to me. I feel like I'm making a contribution when I talk about this thing. So if we stifle that, or um, then we're really not giving them the opportunity to be who they are. And that's really, really important. So just something to think about um, as we talk about that. Stacy, I see you shaking your head. You want to jump in? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, sorry. I think about, you no, know, we good. like, we like to talk about the things that we're good at and the things that mm -hmm. we like. Um, I won't sit down and talk to you about physics. I don't know anything about it. But yeah, right. if you ask me anything about autism, I'm going to sit down and talk to you about it because that's my passion and that's what I'm interested in. And sometimes I ramble. Um, my colleagues will probably say, no, often you ramble. But it's, <laughs> no. if I wasn't allowed to talk about that, mm -hmm. it would be very disheartening. And I'd feel like it's almost an attack at my personality and mm -hmm. um, who I am. So we need to think about that when we tell our um, students or yeah. sons and daughters, I don't want to talk about that right now, or you've talked about that too much. Exactly. Um, instead, you could say something like, oh, one more point, and then we got to move on. Or, yeah, hey, that's, that's awesome. Better. Can you can you hold on and we could talk about it at dinner or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Right, great point, Stacy. right. And, 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 and again, allowing that opportunity later to do that is important and letting them know that that's gonna happen. That's yeah. gonna happen, the most important, thank you. Uh, one of the individuals I've, um, he's actually a professor at UVA who talks about, his person with autism talks about his special interests, um, talks about the opportunity to share. Um, so, you know, he, he mentioned, especially during COVID, perhaps, you know, you may want to um, find, you know, family members or other um, friends or people who might want to Zoom and <laughs> talk about different things that they're interested in. But um, again, we're going to talk about um, honing those skills into perhaps um, not just lifelong leisure skills, but perhaps career skills as well. And really talking about, you um, having those opportunities to share and get comfortable, right? Providing those successes that we're talking about so we can get that motivation to continue to want to, not only to learn about our special interests, but then expand into other things are really, really important. So providing, um, you know, your son or daughter the opportunity to share those things um, is important as well. Anything else on that, on that yeah. space? I'm just trying to get my computer to go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, we've talked about the importance of special interests, but it really, really, truly is important. And, and again, I urge you, anyone with autism, there's so many great things out there now, uh, webinars and um, articles and things that talk about this that we, you know, we didn't have in the early days. And so um, it just really does foster motivation. I'm going to talk about a few folks here in a minute, Temple Grand and some other folks who, um, this is, again, what we've talked about, this is really their life. Again, the, in, the difference between the interests and the hobbies is, right, I think about this all the time. Um, it's, what can, it's what drives me. Um, Temple Grand will say that. Again, Stacey, you made a good point. Temple will say, if you come up and talk to me about autism, yeah, I'm a person with autism, but 
I'm not really interested in that. I don't have a, a lot of information to give you on that. But if you want to talk to me about animal science, that's what I'm an expert at. That's what I know. It. And that was one of her, um, that's her driving motivation, right? And her interest that fosters uh, what she does. Um, again, I talked about the self-image and competence, and I can't talk about this enough because, you know, the research shows, especially as our individuals get older, the co occurring conditions of anxiety and depression with our individuals um, only increases in, instead of decreases. And so it's really, really important that they find a place um, in this world where they belong and they feel competent in what they know. And special interest is where it's at for them. And I can tell you some of our people, right, who have done some of those wonderful things in this world are those individuals who've had special interests and been able to foster them um, and, and, and be able to provide things for us um, that we wouldn't have had had they not had that. Um, the contribution to society. And again, like I said, it's meaningful to that person. And we have to honor that. And when we don't honor that, then we're, we're not being um, person-centered. Oh yeah, someone, uh... okay. Um... So I did see a comment and, and I, I did just quickly, someone asked if they could share a special interest and I would love to hear that if it's okay. We are taking questions at the end. So I don't wanna um, miss that, that just popped up. Um, so thank you for the person who just mentioned that. Um, definitely wanna hear that. Um, and so that goes with this slide. Uh, what do my special interests mean to me? So uh, I can't wait to hear from this person who just put that on there. Um, uh, again, it's about, um, it's important to me and it's my focus. And so I need you to hear what I have to say. And again, having that um, social communication um, deficit as a part of autism, we don't always sometimes see the perspective of others. And so again, that's what we talked about earlier, shaping those conversations into not only just talking about our interests, but then, um, right, that's where we have to model and teach Yep, Stacy's got something to say too. So I've got to put that on hold for a minute. Listen to Stacy, right? That's a social <laughs> aspect. And and sometimes again, that's where motivation goes back to. Some some of our individuals will tell you, well, hey, it's not that I don't think Stacy's not important, but I need you to hear what I need to say right now because it's that important to me. And so again, it's that um, not um, taking that away from folks, but again, shaping that focus, like Stacy said, into um, into a point where we can have conversations and friendships because quite frankly, um, let's be honest, some of where our kiddos are, are suffering in the school systems because they're talking about those things and people think them as odd or weird or that's that kid who knows everything about fans or he can tell you every map. And instead of seeing that as a strength or a cool thing about that person, um, right, uh, some folks see that as something different. So it's really our job is uh, educators, advocates, parents to help foster um, a different way of, um, of thinking and accepting all folks. Go ahead, Stace. <laughs> Man, I'm challenged today. Um, okay, one of the, you know, there's this great um, quote by Temple Grandin, fixations and special interests should be directed into constructive channels instead of being abolished to make a person more normal. And I think you know, I respect Temple so much and I absolutely, I absolutely agree with that, 100%. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so again, just some of those folks, again, I, I just can't urge you enough. I mean, you know, in my career, um, I'm not the expert, but the folks who, um, these are the experts and these are the people we need to learn from. And so, you know, I've just been really honored in my career to work with folks who say, here's what I need. Here's what I do well. Here's what I need you to help me with. And we should all do that. And so, again, Stacy just talked about Temple Grandin, who is, if, if you don't know anything about Temple, Google her. Watch the movie that was made about her. Um, there's so many books. There's some great TED Talks. But again, she's amazing. And I know that um, through the Central Autism Central uh, Society of Virginia, right, Stacy, that you're part of, um, I mean, there, th there's um, talks where you can see her for free now. So if you catch those on Facebook or some other social media, you know, get on there because it's so 
awesome that we have the opportunity to, to hear um, folks like that speak. But you know, one of the things again, Temple says, the last time I heard her is through this last month about this COVID situation, you know, she says, I'm a scientist first, right? And so what's really cool is Temple talked about how that evening she was going to read her um, chemistry magazines before she went to bed. Now, you know, honestly, some people might think that's quirky or weird. I thought that was really cool because you know what? I I'm actually also reading a book at night. So how, you know, how different is that? I know that that's her special interest, but how cool that she um, continues to engage in those things so she can bring us the information in her awesome brain. And that's truly what um, these folks bring us. They see things differently um, in, than, than most of us do. And, and that's why they bring and, and, and vice versa. And that's why we bring our strengths to the table. And we have these amazing minds that can help us. Um, many of you know Greta um, Thunberg. I've heard people pronounce it different ways. And, but, um, you know, again, right, I think 12 or 13 years old, I, I don't want to, um, but amazing, right? Her interest is climate. How awesome that we have a young individual who's uh, so passionate about our climate and knows so many things. And so she's definitely um, brought that special interest to light. Um, and quite frankly, enlightened me uh, about a lot of things. And I just think it's, it's wonderful, again, that we have that. If we didn't have that, how would we be aware, right? And then David Hamrick uh, is um, a young man um, that you see pictured here. I actually heard David a long, long time ago when he just started his career um, as a weather, I think he was working for a TV station in North Carolina as a weather, I think that's where he was at. But uh, anyway, I'll let Stacy talk more about our friend David. But David is an amazing um, young man with autism spectrum disorder who, who does many um, speaking engagements um, as well. And uh, his special interest is, is weather. He is so gifted when it comes to weather. And, you know, I, I think about um, if, if he had an app, I would probably subscribe to his weather app yes. rather than any of the other ones that I have because I think he's spot on. So yeah. Um, I, yeah, like you said, Teresa, such gifts and special interests that have, have channeled into meaningful employment, which is yeah. fantastic. And Greta, man, she, she's got quite a path ahead of her if she continues on um, yeah, climate change and so forth. Yeah, and I know you're going to talk about. Um, I know you're going to talk about employment, um, Stacy. And I don't want to take that anything away from your um, what you're going to say. But I will. I will just say that um, where I live up here in Frederick County, you know, we have a um, you know, it's an agricultural area, and a good friend of mine who is an ag teacher um, says, you know, uh, I talk about her in my class that's how she starts her middle school class every year with Temple and she actually took a group of folks to see um, Temple um, and I just think that's amazing because again Temple will tell you yes I'm an animal scientist and and like you said Stacy, she's revolutionized that um, profession because of what she knows and her abilities and how she took that special interest and it's it's what she does and she'll tell you I just want to help people I just want to give them the information and that's truly what what these special interests bring. Okay, so interest and friendships. I um, This is really important to me because friendships are one of the things that really enhance quality of life. And yes. if you think about the friends that you have in your, in your life, you share the same interests, at least some same interests, whether it's music or food or um, politics or um, whatever, but there's a connection because of your shared interest. And that's, that doesn't change for people with different abilities. So it's a matter of figuring out what those, those special interests are and finding others with the same special interests. I, um, last year I was at a, um, an adult meeting for adults with um, autism and, and they said, you know, we have a hard time because this is my interest and some have like cosplay, some people like comics, other people like, um, coffee. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not that if you have this interest, there are others with the same interest. And so we spent some time on the internet, just finding other people who have those same interests. Facebook groups are one way. There's meetup groups. There's even zoom meetup groups right now. Um, 
Um, last week, I met with a 20-year-old who he's very interested in a political party and very interested in hiking. I said, there's thousands <laughs> of <laughs> groups like that. So we went um, through the, the Facebook groups and he said, oh my gosh, here's one right near me. And so he chatted mm -hmm. in the messenger I know this is COVID right now and I want to be safe and I want you to be safe, but what are you doing for this Democratic Party? And so that's him reaching out to be with young adults his age who have intense passion and interest for politics. And I, I highly recommend spending the time doing that instead of, as Temple said, abolishing um, those, those interests. Um, you know, there's, I, I work with um, a lot of school divisions and Teresa and I work in several together. And we, we spend some time talking to folks about, you know, your students have these special interests. Well, what in their school community is closely related to that? Well, it might be that someone's very interested in sports facts and might know all the, there is to know about basketball and, and points and rebounds and all that stuff. If you think about that, what's a nice chant, what is a nice um, match for that? Mm -hmm. How about being a manager of the basketball team? And that can happen as early as middle school. Or what about um, someone who has intense interest for the climate? Well, I bet there's an environmental club that they'd be an excellent member of, or key club or something like that. And that's not to say that people won't need accommodations or modifications, right. but it's fostering those, those interests to be part of a social community. And, and it's related to what they're interested. It might be like Teresa said, branching out a little bit. So Thomas's Hank engine's really cool when you're, when you're young, but then you kind of grow with that interest. So Thomas can grow into, you know, other trains. And then as you get older, it could talk about train schedules and, and, um, passenger trains and routes and things like that. So really um, taking the time to look at what those interests are and matching to the school community and your, your, your physical home community um, so that your son or daughter can be part of that group. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And those are such important points. And, you know, I think, too, um, again, I just go back to the beginning of the presentation, again, talking about the value and setting those opportunities for success. Because, again, uh, I think it might be Temple, uh, you know, there's several quotes about if you never give me the opportunity to do those things, how will I know if I'm going to be be successful, right? Absolutely. So when we talk about how motivation is linked to that, um, again, success begets success, right? So uh, if I if I go one time and it's not successful, okay, we don't give up, right? We go again and we provide that opportunity again for that success. So the, so the motivation, um, they, they see some value in that, right? And so we start to build that intrinsic uh, motivation because again, we're talking about folks that may or may not necessarily want to be in that social world. And so we have to, again, teach them that. And that's what I want us to remember. Um, so great, uh, great points, Stacey. I was thinking about our friend, we just found out who uh, played the bagpipes, Stacey. Oh yeah. And um, it actually, in our area, we actually have a bagpipe. Uh, we have an adult bagpipe group. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if he could connect with them and then see what he could, you know, start with the young Even just people. to practice with them. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So again, That's right. Awesome. Yeah, we gotta help our folks and think outside the box. Thanks, Stacy. So consider completing something like this. And we do this in schools often. And you do it with the, the person, obviously. So what are your strengths? And we often, and I am at fault for this too, talk about what are you bad at? What do we have to fix? What, and what a negative, horrible way to approach something. But let's think about the positive piece of things. So what are your strengths? What are your interests? Are they the same thing? What are you good at? What are your abilities? And what makes you happy? It might be that there's something that goes across all the categories. But what we really want to focus on are what makes you happy, right? Happiness is what increases quality of life. It makes you confident and comfortable. And it makes you really want to get up and go to school, get up and go to work, right? So thinking about those strengths, interests, and abilities. And this can be done in kindergarten. It does not have to wait till middle high school and adulthood. This should be done on a 
a regular basis. You know, Teresa was talking about the co-occurring conditions of depression and anxiety. And when those start hitting, it's really hard to think about what makes you happy. Absolutely. It's really hard to think what you're good at because you feel awful. And with COVID-19 right now, I know a lot of folks who are feeling very scared, feeling very um, lonely and depressed because their routine is disrupted. They're, they're not having the same um, connections, even if it's um, just going to, the, going to school or going to the grocery store or whatever, not having those same connections. And they're unable to answer these questions. So let's, let's keep working on this so that we can make sure that we're addressing these things. If we had to talk about all the things we we're bad at all day, how horrible would that be, right? Right. All right, interest in employment. So this is something I'm particularly interested in, in too. And we think about, there's, um, um, from the Howard um, Gardner camp of multiple intelligences, but for this <laughs> purpose, um, I'm gonna narrow it down to visual thinkers, music math brains, and non-visual thinkers, and those more verbal brains. And thinking about your child or your student, what are they, are they more of a visual thinker? Do they, are they really good at math? Are they musicians? Or are they pretty good at that auditory processing and, and uh, more verbal? Well, you can shape those, those um, learning styles into interests. I think of um, one young man who um, his, his special interest is photography and he's amazing, but he hasn't done anything with it because he didn't think he could or he didn't think he was good right. enough. Right. And um, I set him up with an Etsy account and he's actually making money now mm -hmm. on, on something that he absolutely loves while he's furloughed from his job. Um, those music math brains that are really good at the technical piece, they could be engineers, they could be music teachers, statisticians, programmers, um, surveyors, those sorts of things that really um, help with that and, and um, enhance that part of the brain. Non-visual thinkers are more verbal brains. I don't understand this at all, but <laughs> um, these folks can do a lot of things like being um, a journalist, or I know a lot of folks who are really, really good at writing and like writing. And maybe they can write for a local paper or a lot of communities have their, or, or counties have their own um, paper. Well, he, why can't they have a column in that paper or even a, make a comic or a question answer or something so that they're fostering those interests, yeah. which then, even if it's volunteer or internship, that can, that can certainly parlay into employment. Absolutely. And uh, that was a, a nice job, Stacey, of talking about that. But um, Temple Grandin does also do a really great TED Talk um, on the different kind of minds. And, and that's exactly what you're, you're talking about here. So, you know, just something for folks, if you want some additional information on that, where she, she talks, says exactly what you just said. And so um, she says it takes different kinds of minds and it absolutely does. And so um, this is really important. And, you know, Stacy, like we talked about earlier, you were, gave that example about writing, you know, again, thinking um, in school, again, as you spoke, how does that um, fit into our, our school community. Um, also, perhaps, you know, they're working with the school paper um, or different things like that. And, and, and again, I, I think, again, it goes back to that we have to be person-centered, too, is, is taking, you know, Stacey, when you talked about that strengths and interests, really talking to those folks about that and then taking the next step. And that's what's so important, because oftentimes um, we may do that with um, uh, a student, but then um, do we continue to take that forward? And again, when we're talking about motivation, we've got to help that student move that forward to be successful so that we are reaching these types of potential activities and jobs, as you mentioned. You know, when you think about, if you are doing something that you're super good at and you're super passionate and motivated about, other people are going to think you're amazing. So mm -hmm. think about um, the photographer who's taking pictures at all the basketball games in school or, or at the dances or the play and have a very interesting um, artistic mind about that. And then they, their pictures are in the school paper or in the, in the yearbook. And people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Look at what Teresa did. 
-hmm. or um, they're doing the, the lighting for the school musical. Well, they're going to get recognized for the lighting being amazing. So all those things really can help build that um, relationships and friendships while fostering those interests. Absolutely. And self so, yeah. yeah, we're almost to the end. Um, the next two slides are some really great links um, for folks you can do with your son's daughters, um, students, they can do themselves, which I highly recommend if they can. Um, but these are really great um, links to look at what those interests are and it will help you and them kind of hone their, their strengths and interests into marketable skills, possible internships, um, looking at what classes to take if they're going into high school or college, um, what environments are, are where you would might want to work, um, what if you like to be in a cube by yourself or if you like being with people, you like working outside, you like to do heavy work, all those things. So this is, um, uh, you know, we have the Virginia um, Career Clusters webpage, and through that you can um, look at the different areas where and what jobs are in that area and how much they pay. Um, and then from that, you can start reaching out to your community and looking for um, possible internships. And it's all about making connections. And I'm sure you have neighbors or friends or family members who know someone who might be in a field of interest that is of an interest to your son or daughter. And that's how you get those, those connections started. And even if it's going to do an, um, a, a situational interview or um, going to see, hey, what does it really mean to be a landscaper? Or what does it really mean to um, be a veterinary, veterinarian tech or whatever? And, and I highly recommend that. And now, um, as things are starting to open back up, this might be a good time. Um, my young man who um, we set up with a couple clubs through Facebook, he interviewed um, a college professor about the culinary arts program, because that's something he's considering. And he did that over the phone. He wrote down what he needed to answer uh, the questions, and he um, got his information. So even if you can't see a person in a person in person, you can still do those things remotely. Do you have anything to add, Teresa? No, great, um, great um, information. Thank you, and thanks for all the sites. Those are those are great. So now we're at our live chat um, section of today, and I put this um, up here because I love <laughs> Toy Story, and I feel like every day is about Zoom meetings and live chat. So. <laughs> Please bear with my humor. <laughs> Oops. Um, and just uh, as we go into live chat, just a uh, uh, next week we'll be um, doing executive functioning tasks, and that's with my friend Josh Taylor and myself. Um, and again, you can uh, of course um, register as you always do, um, and share this with other people if you think it is useful.